Brent here with Bring Your Own Tools, and on today's episode, we are taking a field trip to North Bend, Washington to a CNC shop just to see what's possible with CNC machinery. Let's get started. Now, I recently met the Avid CNC team and they invited me to their facility in North Bend, Washington. It's pretty incredible and they have a plethora of plasma cutters as well as CNC machines. Now, you can do so many things with a CNC machine and I think it's just the next level of DIY aspects. They walk me through the entire process of VCarve, which is the platform where they actually implement programs into the machine and texture and different variances of height as well as the cutting apparatus itself. Now, I will not personally be showcasing the exact process of how to work VCarve yet because in all honesty, I don't know. I'm learning and I just wanted to physically show you my journey of the first time that I actually worked with a CNC machine. Now I promise once I actually do learn the process, I will teach you on YouTube, but inevitably, let's just take a look and see all the cool little things that we found. Now these guys are the cutting apparatuses, and they're called up, down, cut, spiral, CNC router bits. Now the unique thing about these router bits is that they are specifically up and down to reduce chip up when actually cutting wood surfaces. Now it's pretty amazing, especially when you see them in person, especially up close because they're pretty slick and I've never seen anything like this. Now once we had our template design laid out in VCarve, we then proceeded to take my mahogany that I brought and secured it to the board, then set up the CNC just to make sure we had the proper depth. It's a whole process of making sure that it knows exactly where it is, and it's a pretty slick system because once you have it implemented, you then bring it over to this platform which is called Mach 4, and then once you do that, you just start routing. Now, the thing about the CNC machine is that it really saves a lot of time and energy, especially if you're doing multiple things at once and you want this machine to be working for you while you're doing something else because, you know, we only have so much time in the day and so many things to do. Now, watching this thing work for the first time is truly impressive in the fact that one, it's extremely fast. Two, it's actually much quieter than I originally anticipated because it has its own routing system and it's not your normal DeWalt router that you pick up at Home Depot. Also, with these bits, it's extremely accurate, as in, if I didn't want to, I didn't have to actually sand this board afterwards. It was incredible how accurate it was, and the only chip out, blow out areas was on that right side there, as you can see. All the other pieces were perfectly cut, and yeah, you didn't even need to sand it afterwards. I also learned when working with these machines that you want to make it easier on the router bits and therefore we did two passes to get a quarter inch down as in doing an eighth inch pass two times versus a quarter inch pass all at once. Now once the machine is done cutting you can then easily remove it from the blocks and behold what you have created. Like I said, you really don't need to sand this thing. It's pretty perfect and it just gives me a few ideas what I could do with this piece. Look at that, quite the difference, and it only took about an hour to do between the computer time as well as the CNC's time. And it just uh, gives me so many ideas for the future, and we'll see when we get to them, but it will definitely be incorporated in more BOITs in the near future, so we'll see. But in the meantime, let's figure out what we're going to do with this. Now there's actually two things that I want to make with this one piece. The first one is going to be a hot pad because inevitably it's designed perfectly for a hot pad in my opinion. It's a cool unique design but it also can aerate the bottom so therefore it can cool the product that you're actually placing on the surface. The second smaller piece is going to be just some type of unique epoxy pour because I wanted to truly find out what it's going to look like if I had this type of surface but I poured epoxy into the crevices. Now first I just take some silicone and apply a bead of silicone on all sides and then wrap the entire piece in tape. Now yes I know this is not the most professional look but guess what it works and there was no leakage at all so you can be well assured that this actually does hold all the epoxy in place. 
Now that we have our form set, I then take some Total Boat Epoxy and go ahead and mix thoroughly. Now we're going to be using two different types of pigment. One is going to be a very unique, beautiful black diamond purple pigment, and the other one is a tap plastics white, and this is a solid white pigment. Now the reason why I did both is just because I wanted to have a unique look to the entire piece and really just to try something new because I haven't tried blending two types of pigments like this together but I think it's gonna turn out pretty cool. Cross your fingers. Now I could watch this type of epoxy pouring for hours, I don't know, something about it's just so soothing to me, but maybe that's why I like working with it. After I apply both epoxies, I do want to mix it in a little bit more thoroughly, as well as have some type of transition between the purple and white pigment. After I have it mixed thoroughly, I then just place it to the side and let it dry for 24 hours. Now let's get to the larger piece. This machine is actually a Rockler portable router table. Now I've never seen a need for a router table, but after using this thing, I might be using it much more often because this made my workstation a lot more secure and I was able to focus on the piece itself versus having to worry about a large router. Now I have a 45 degree chamfer bit in the router. Now I didn't have to do this, but inevitably I wanted to give the bottom edge a little attention because the top edge got so much attention and it just looked a little boring. It was just plain old flat and why not give it a little style? I mean, look at that. Who doesn't love a little of that style? Now this thing was already buttery smooth for the most part, but I did decide to knock down all the edges with 120 to 220 sandpaper as well as the top surface. Now the one thing you're not able to do is get in between all the nitty gritty little areas on the top portion, but that's understandable. And the fact is the CNC machine did such a good job there, I didn't have to worry about sanding that area at all, which is always nice. Now after I was done sanding, I then took some mineral spirits and wiped off the entire surface just to get a bit of the sawdust off the wood. After it's dry, then I take one of my favorite finishes, which is a walrus oil for cutting boards and applied that to all sides. I figured I'd use a food safe grade finish on this product just because it's going to be in the kitchen, as well as the fact that if we ever needed to wash it, we could and then apply a secondary coat later on. And yes, of course, the main issue with trying to finish a piece like this is to actually get into all those nooks and crannies, which inevitably I did with a foam brush. It just took a couple moments, as you can imagine. And with a special piece like this, you gotta brand it. So I am using my Gearheart Industries BYOT brand special and heating it up to over 200 degrees and then branded it just to give a bit of pizzazz. Yeah, does, does anyone use the term pizzazz anymore? I don't know, it's kind of, I, I kind of like it. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll bring pizzazz back. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. Now I really let this finish soak in and after about 20 minutes, I then remove the excess material and then add clear plastic non-skid bumpers. Now you don't have to add these, but inevitably because it's gonna be in the kitchen and you want things stationary, it's always nice to have something that makes sure that things stay in place or at least as much as possible. We never know when Kona's gonna try and get into the lasagna, right? Yeah. Now that that piece is set and done, I then proceed to our little epoxy pour, which is fully cured, and after I remove all the silicone as well as the tape, I then take it to my oscillating belt sander and sand away all the miscellaneous excess epoxy. Now you don't have to have a belt sander like this, you can have just a standard sander, just know that the oscillating belt sander makes this process much quicker, and that's always appreciated. The moment I strip away all the excess is the moment that I realized is exactly what I wanted. A very unique texture and design as far as how the epoxy flows between the segments of wood as well as how the two colors flow together. And that's really what I was going for on this particular block because I'm always trying new things and sometimes I'm not just teaching my audience, I'm also teaching myself. So hopefully you guys appreciate this new little trick. 
Now after we sand this thing all the way up to 220, I then take some Halicon Clear Finish by Total Boat and apply it to the entire surface. This finish, again, very nice. I've used it in past projects and inevitably it's a very easy finish that can be applied multiple different ways and you can apply multiple coats within an hour. And just like any of the products that you see on this video, I will leave links in the description box below on where to actually purchase them. But guess what? After you apply the finish, we are done. Now this project really wouldn't have been possible without the help of Avid CNC and just the fact that I'm dipping my toes into the CNC world really gets my creative juices flowing as well as just thinking of all the possibilities is endless. And who doesn't love a decorative hot pad? I mean, food brings people together, especially in a large Italian family like myself, and why not bring my homemade lasagna? That'll bring people together. Oh yeah, that is one beautiful sexy beast. Now I'm hungry. And there you have it, episode number 68 of BYT fully completed, and I must say, these turned out quite amazing, especially for my first time ever using a CNC machine. But, I mean, let's be honest, I had quite the helping hand from Avid CNC, which is what I want to say a huge special thank you to them. They walked me through their entire facility, as well as walked me through the entire process of making this pattern. And the possibilities with the CNC machine are endless, and hopefully I get a chance to work with them more in the future. But in any case, thank you for your time. Please like the video, please subscribe to this channel, and please check out my, check out my Instagram feed as well as my newly developed website at bytools.me. Also, look behind me, yeah, I got a sticker wall. I went to a trade show recently and I got a ton of stickers from different types of creators. So if you are a creator on YouTube and you would like to send me a sticker for the sticker wall, well DM me on Instagram and I will personally send you my address as well as attach your sticker to the sticker wall. But in any case, save your time. Catch you next time. I used the sandpaper for like 10 seconds and this is what happened. Uh, note to self, I might need some extra sandpaper since there's a lot of sharp corners on this. Yeah.